Hello friends, welcome to Desi Plaza. My name is Khushbu Rawley. Today we have with us Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firm. And this firm has been providing law services for over 20 years now within America to different clients. They have very efficient staff who can speak multiple languages like Hindi, English, Spanish, Telugu, Kannada, Marathi, Gujarati, etc. They have core values of being practical, prompt, and professional. So friends, let's welcome Mr. Rahul Reddy. Rahul ji, welcome to the show. Thank you, Kishwa. First of all, we would like to know about your background, like your academics, your studies, since when are you in US, and how did you end up in this field of immigration services? I've been practicing immigration law from 22 years. Uh, my firm has been established, Redeem and Newman PC has established in 1997, which is exactly 20 years ago. I did my law in India, I'm a lawyer in India too, but as soon as I complete my law, I moved to USA and became a lawyer here in USA in 1995, which is 22 years ago. Since then, I've been exclusively practicing immigration law. Um, I, right now, we have a different partners in our office. We are 12 lawyers law firm. We have a support team of about 50 people in addition to the uh, 12 lawyers that we have. We practice exclusively immigration law and mostly concentrating on H-1Bs, labor certification, I-140, adjustment of status, and some L-1 visas. Um, but our focus has been only immigration since our inception in 1997. That's uh, so awesome. Thank you for letting us know that. So what kind of uh, services does your firm provide to different business holders and business companies over here? We do, we, uh, we normally uh, take a lot of clients in the IT industry. Most of them are Indians, it happens to be. And uh, they, we file H-1B cases, we file labor cases, we file I-140s. And uh, as you know that the immigration in general, uh, the clients are more Indian. The reason why the clients are more Indian is that unlike other countries, the time taken for Indians to get the green card is much longer than compared to the other countries. So if a person is from Pakistan, it only takes one year to get the green card. But if it is an Indian, it takes 12 years, unfortunately. And so in the pipeline of the immigration, it so happens that more Indians are there. Uh, so our clients are mostly Indians that, uh, that are struggling to get the green card and getting to the H-1Bs. And that's 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 all we provide. So, uh, like for our audience, like in layman terms, what is the process of uh, getting uh, like citizenship and green card over here? Like, would you like to explain? Yeah, on typically that? people come here on a student visa directly, or they will come here on a H-1B visa from the companies, and they try to get to the green card. Once they come here on a student visa, you are allowed to stay, uh, continue studying, and then after your uh, education is over, you will be given a permit called Employment Authorization Document, also called OPT, Optional Practical Training. Mm -hmm. And in that uh, a practical training, you will be allowed to work for one year. And after that one year period, if your graduation has been in a science, technology, engineering and mathematics, also called as STEM degrees, then you will get an additional 24 months period of employment authorization also called as stem extension so you have a period of three years that's 36 months to work on the employment authorization in the interim period the individual will try to get an h1b because after the three-year period if they don't get any sponsorship or if they don't get into the lottery either they have to go back to the school or they have to get an H-1B. I mean, that's the, that's the target that they do. So we do the H-1B uh, case for them. And once they do the H-1B, the H-1B is allowed only for three years, will be extended for three more years. The total period of the H-1B is only six years. If a person wants to stay in this country beyond the six year period of time, he should apply the green card application, which is called a perm labor. That's a typical route for the, not most of the Indians. And that green card process is taking a longer time. Um, back in old days, it was taking less time, but it's taking a longer time for the green card process. So once you file a green card application, the six year period of H-1B can be extended beyond the six year period. Um, uh, if uh, once a labor certification has been filed, I-140, and once the date becomes current, what is date? I will explain you a little bit later on that. 
but that's the entire process called labor certification, I-140, and green card application. Mm -hmm. Once we get the green card uh, adjustment of status file, gets the green card, the individual is pretty much can do anything what a citizen can except voting rights. And once the guy gets a green card, it takes about five years for them to get the citizenship. Correct. And that, then that's when they can vote. That's right. Once <laughs> you get the citizen, you can vote. Yes. Correct. So thank you so much for providing that information in terms of how students can come here and what, what's the process for them to go finally achieve the uh, citizenship. Mm -hmm. But let's say there are some businesses who want to come and invest over here and uh, uh, get their foot in uh, American uh, business industry. What would you suggest to them and how does your firm help them? In USA, unlike most of the countries, to establish a company and do a business, it's very easy. In most of the countries, the process is very difficult. But in USA, really, you can go to a website and fill out the information and form a company. And the, and the company can do any business in the United States unless it's prohibited. Um, uh, they can start a consulting company, they can invest in a motel, they can invest in different items. The company can do anything legally they can do. So mm -hmm. uh, we do help some of the companies in investing into the United mm -hmm. States. But our focus, as I was been telling, is mostly only immigration part. We do speak, we do have some uh, CPAs and lawyers that work exclusively on the formation of the companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but we guide the individuals how to form a company if they are coming from foreign country and investing into this country. Okay, okay, sounds good. So uh, uh, you spoke uh, uh, all these uh, information about that EAD and how right. the process and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to the latest uh, talk, uh, topic about uh, and buzz about this uh, changes that Trump government has imposed mm -hmm. in America recently. So what uh, kind of impacts would this process in general have, the immigration process in general have? Uh, would you like to talk about that? Yeah, as we know that the new administration got into effect on January 20th of 2017. Uh, this administration came into power discussing, uh, came on the theory of anti-immigration. That is their platform. That's how they win the elections. So they, they are implementing the anti-immigration policies right now to an extent. Uh, though Trump administration initially said it's going to be more about illegal immigrants, they're also focusing on legal immigration too. Um, as we already know, uh, as of yesterday now, we have some uh, restrictions on some Muslim countries. Uh, also, they have dropped, they have also put some restrictions on legal immigration too. For example, for the people who were having a stamping of H-1B and they want to extend their H-1B, previously they were allowed to go and drop their passport and the information in a drop box and they would get their visa extended uh, within two or three days uh, without even seeing yes. a council officer. Mm -hmm. Now um, Trump said, no, Trump administration has banned those things every time you want to get a visa extended, you have to present yourself in, the, in front of the consulate and then you have to answer all the questions and maybe you will be allowed to come in or maybe you won't be allowed to come in. So that provision has been taken off uh, as mm -hmm. of yesterday. Um, and there's also about that EAD extension program mm -hmm. which was granted to the uh, spouses, um, right? The right, that's called that. H4 EAD. As I was describing to you, Kushbu, that um, once the individual starts on a pathway to the green card, when they have their I-140 approved, their spouses who are on H-4 visa will be allowed to work uh, for a period of time for which they are in the United States. That's called H-4 EAD. That provision came about one and a half year ago. Um, it was through a regulation process done by the Obama administration. There is a lot of fear at this point of time that that particular H-4 EAD will be taken off. But I don't think so that this administration is focusing on H-4 EAD at this point of time. There is no indication to us that they are going to take it off. These rumors are flying a lot, but it doesn't. The reason why I want to explain to you is that there are about 150,000 people who have employment authorization on H-4 EAD at this point of time. However, there is something called DACA mm -hmm. where there are 900,000 people here in the United States, they are undocumentedly present in this country and they have an employment authorization. <coughs> Excuse me. 
So the total period of um, uh, the, the total number of people who are in employment authorization in Dhaka is nine hundred thousand. So when Obama, uh, when Trump administration, when Trump was in the election process, he said he's going to eliminate the Dhaka completely. Wow. That and means that, that all these nine hundred thousand people who have employment authorization, their employment authorization will be cancelled by one single stroke of signature. And wow. also, he could convert it because when you are applying for a DACA employment authorization document, you are indicating that the person is undocumentedly present in this country. You're signing a document which they did. Oh. So if Trump wants to act on that, he could have just said that your employment authorization cancel and then hereby you are getting the deportation order because you signed a document saying you are undocumentedly present here. Mm -hmm. So he could have done that. He is not doing it right now. Okay. So um, it, it, at this point of time he is not doing it. So coming back to the H4 EAD, I think so now. that he would rather go on undocumented people who are 900,000 than compared to the 150,000 people who are documentedly uh, here paying the taxes and abiding by all the rules, Correct. I don't think so he's going to cancel the H4 EAD at this point of time. Just yet. He, 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 he okay, would we rather can go on the... safe just yet. Um, yeah, I don't think terms. so he would do it. Uh, you can never tell what can be done, but at this point of time, uh, there is no clear 900, indication. 900,000 is a big number. To That's right, I mean, 900,000 is a big It gets cancelled, it's... Um, well, having a policy in a day is one thing, signing a bill is one thing, but then managing again, so many people, their statuses and all That's that right. is completely separate. I mean, but there I don't know how, what kind of insight do you have in terms of if ever that De happens. Definitely, this administration is going to focus and is going to put a lot of resources on the immigration enforcement as compared to the previous governments. Now, mm -hmm. if you have seen the uh, deportation things that occurred in the preceding 10-15 uh, years, uh, starting from Bush era to right now, uh, we used to call Obama the deportation king, though uh, <laughs> Trump says that he's very lenient, uh, we call him as a deportation king. Uh, mm -hmm. He used to deport one million people every year um, who are undocumentedly present here. Um, now this administration wants So they had DACA or no DACA? Uh, I'm sorry? One million who were deported every year under uh, Obama's uh, administration, did they sign that DACA thing? No. Oh, no. wow. The, uh, Wonder they how they find these people? They, 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 there is a criteria at the time of Obama administration. Mm -hmm. The criteria was that if they have any small crimes or any crimes oh. they have done, if they have found them to be illegal, if they come across to them to be illegal, mm -hmm. Um, those are the kind of priorities that they had if they are trying to enter undocumentarily, crossing the borders. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the most of the people who will get deported so automatically. Yeah. So basically Obama was focusing on truly like uh, undocumented and illegal uh, guys. But he was uh, quite in support of the working class who came, in which uh, majority of which are um, apparently Indians. Mm -hmm. And uh, that rule of allowing their spouses or the That's dependent right. uh, spouse to mm -hmm. be able to work, even that was kind of nice, which, uh, well, as you said, it might just stay for a while. Uh, but, but anyways, how, what's your take on um, this thing that he's banning uh, seven people from seven countries mm -hmm. for almost like next 90 days, so they're under high scrutiny when right. they come back. So, mm -hmm. and how is it being planned? What would they do if they're uh, coming back and they're on airport? At this point of time, what they said was that we are going to ban the refugees from that country. That is the executive order that has been signed. They're mm -hmm. not banning the people from that country. They're just banning only the refugees. Oh, oh I what thought refugees refugee? for like 120 days and others, uh, I don't know the details, but others for like 90 days under high scrutiny right. or something? Yeah, the, the, the 90 days travel restriction is there with okay. those countries. Mm -hmm. If you recall that, um, we used to have these travel uh, restrictions with Cuba until 2016, we had a, a travel restrictions to Cuba. Mm -hmm. What does that mean is that if any individual wants to travel to any of those restricted countries on the executive order, you need to get the permission of the State Department. Okay. North Korea and, uh, and uh, Cuba used to be in that list before. Now they, they added all these countries. Cuba is no longer in that list. They have to have document from their country right. you have to, to get, enter here. You have to get the State Department permission oh. to go into Cuba. That was the story. Now, 
It's the same story with these seven countries and uh, for this 90 days that if you want to travel to any of these countries. The reason why he cited was that most of these terrorists are coming from these countries. That's the reason he cited for the travel restrictions. Uh, this is only at this point of time, 90 days. It might extend for a long period of time. Okay, but within 90 days, if they do have their appropriate documentation from state, they can still enter, right? So, if they are outside the country, since they travel before the executive order is there, they are they can be allowed to come in. They can be allowed to come in. They mm -hmm. might be restricted on it, but it's better that they have all documentation that they have. Com they are completely legal in this country. They'll be scrutinized every time they come. Uh, when they when they come here, they'll be scrutinized very thoroughly. Mm -hmm. If they are planning to travel after the executive order, though, then they need to consult, they need to make sure that they get the permission of the state before they travel. If they're already outside the country, they're coming in, they will be screened very much into mm -hmm. whether or not they'll be allowed because they, no refugees are allowed from that country. Mm -hmm. So based on that particular item uh, that refugees are not allowed, they will consider everybody coming into this country as an refugee. Oh, oh <coughs> and, that's uh, the... Because of that, the restriction will be very high to come into this country. Wow, that's uh, cool. And this is, uh, as of now, we know for 90 days, but then who knows what will happen after 90 days and, or 120 days of uh, this uh, rule already in place. Mm -hmm. So friends, uh, we are still in talks with uh, Mr. Rahul Reddy from Reddy and Newman Law Firm. We shall return after a short break. Thank you.